It's either attached to an extension or in Narnia. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm Sarah, the most awkward car girl on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for those of you that are new to my channel, there's a link up above that will get you caught up on today's project. The last video you saw on the MR2, I wet sanded the front bumper and I also cut out the openings for the factory fog lights. Now I do have a front lip on order, hopefully it should be here towards the end of the week. And at that point in time, I'll put that on and I'm still trying to get a set of fog light brackets so I can mount the fog lights. For those of you that know I was at SEMA last week, I said when I got back, I was going to get straight to work. My butt has to get back to work. And last night, I did exactly just that. So that's where we're at right now. I have the door and part of, oh, where's my arm? <laughs> there it is. I have part of the rear quarter panel wet sanded. Now I ran into a couple issues so far that I found. You can see right here there's a few fish eyes as well as some chips in this clear coat. So what I need to do is I need to get some more clear to fill in these areas so I can wet sand over since the base coat's still there. It's just the clear that's missing. So same thing right here. I just need to get some more clear coat, fill in that area, and then I can wet sand over that. That'll fill that. Over here though, you can see there's this weird spot. Unfortunately, when I had a hailstorm about a month ago, I picked up a couple little dings right here that I'll have to have paintless dent repaired. In addition to that, I need to remove my front fender because that needs to be painted as well as the door handles, the gas door, the spoiler, the mirrors which are already off the car, and I think that's it. I think that, oh, and the engine cover. And those are all the pieces that I need to spray. I did make a video on this wet sanding process in the past, like nine or 10 months ago. So it's been quite a while, but I'm gonna explain real quick what I'm doing. Basically all I'm doing is going over with water in this spray bottle. I'm using this foam block, it's 1500 grit. Actually, this is the first time I've tried a foam block. Usually I just take a piece of plexiglass and I wrap my 1500 grit around that. That way it kind of contours and you can flex it to sand. And then after I start sanding, I squeegee the clear coat and gunk and stuff that I've sanded off out of the way. And then I wipe it dry with a microfiber so I can see how much of the orange peel is left. Now what I also have, this right here is a paint thickness gauge. Now this thing was only like $15 I think on Amazon and it's probably not the best of quality. What this is good for doing though, is if I'm sanding one area too long, I can check that area in relation to an area around it and see just how thick that spot is. So it gives me at least a ballpark idea if I'm sanding too much in one spot, I can check that area and then check an area where I haven't sanded as much next to it and it lets me know. Just get the area nice and wet, like so. But normally you would want to mask off areas like this black trim, but because I need to refinish the black trim on this car because it's all screwed up from probably when they painted this car originally, or I don't know, maybe just because it's almost 30 years old, it's going to have to get refinished. So all I'm doing is doing this area right here. You can see the white residue that's actually clear coat. And then I'm going to squeegee it like so. See how there's dark red visible and there's that light pink around the edges of it? 
Well, that dark red you see is the low spots in the clear coat or the orange peel. Hence, it kind of looks like the peel of an orange. So I'm trying to just get it all uniform like up here, but you don't want to go too far and wear away too much of the clear coat. So I just go until it's uniform looking and then I stop right there. All in all, this is like a great car for me to practice on because it was a $2,500 car. And even though I do care quite a bit about the end result of this car, if I screw up, during this process, it's no big deal because I am gonna be taking some panels down to a paint booth. So if I really screw up, and which I hope I don't, I could always just repaint the car. The side of the car is done. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing these glasses, they're blue blockers. They're supposed to stop blue light from getting into your eyes. So when I'm looking at like my phone or my laptop or whatever, I wear these glasses to prevent my eyes from getting tired. So I'm wearing them out here because there is absolutely no reason why I'm wearing them out here. I just, I like wearing them because they're cute. Is that good enough of a reason? It is now almost four o'clock. So to say this is a time consuming process is an understatement. Yeah, just bear with me. We're gonna get this paintwork knocked out on Mr. Dose. And then once it's looking pretty, we can work on other things. So what I need to do now while I still have a car facing this direction is take off this fender and the door handle because I'm gonna need to take those off for paint. So let's get cracking. Why did I say cracking? I say some really cringeworthy stuff sometimes. I took off the inner fender liner, A, because I want to clean it on both sides because I have OCD. And there's really no other reason why I took this off because I just I want to clean it. But also it does kind of make it a little bit easier for me to access the hardware that's at the front of this fender because last time when I put this fender on, I struggled because you can't access that hardware with the inner fender liner in there. So now I can. Way easier. Oh, that one's pretty deep. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get onto that one. Oh, I need a deep socket. This is really embarrassing. <laughs> I need to invest in a better socket selection. Like, my socket selection absolutely sucks. I have more standard sockets than I do metric, yet everything I work on is metric. Good luck finding a 10 mil in here. I found it. It was attached to an extension. Always is the case with the 10 mil. It's either attached to an extension or in Narnia. Those are the only places you'll ever find one. Go. Oh no! There's a plastic snap snap. Oh gosh. No! There we go. Good thing I got those new struts. And I got some new um, strut mounts too. So that's good. Hashtag healthy. Mm. So time to sand the hood. This is probably gonna take me like an hour, hour and a half since it's the largest panel in the car. Not gonna do the headlight covers though because I'm gonna need one of those as a reference to color match the wing and the front fender I just removed and the door handles and the mirrors and the gas door, which I need to remove still. Squeeze under. Mm. <laughs> Why are you in your multicams? Because they haven't come in the mail yet. Are you serious? Yeah, I called them. They're like, get all the ship on the toll.
Okay. So, these are all the pieces that I need to paint. I got the fender, the engine cover side blades, the engine cover, my two power mirrors, and then last, I need to remove my door handles, my gas door, and my wing. So yeah, I know it doesn't look like much progress, but this is a lot of progress. I mean, I got a considerable amount of this wet sanding done and it's extremely time consuming. However, it needed to be done. So I am happy. All I got left is the back bumper, the top and around the back window, the trunk lid, this fender, and this door. The back quarter panel has already been wet sanded. It just needs to be rebuffed. We're getting there. It's gonna look good when it's done, I, I hope. I'm excited. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Sarah sanding. <laughs> and I will see you with some TT content very soon. Bye.